Hey everyone, Tony here. Hope you're doing well. It is Monday, January 28th. I have some positive news to share with you guys. Uh, hope you're holding strong as well. The market uh, took a bit of a dive today. Um, not significant, you know, from a 24 hour perspective, we're like in the five to 8% range as far as drop. But uh, let's see how this plays out. We are still in the bear market um, and we just have to be patient. And of course, you know, I've been sharing the facts with you guys of the building that's taking place, the infrastructure and so forth that's being built out. And some people ask, you know, why isn't the price moving, um, you know, based on the news that we're hearing? And uh, it goes back to what we've talked about, where even back in Q3 and Q4 of 2018, when we heard about Fidelity, when we heard about uh, TD Ameritrade and RSX and all and Yale and Harvard and all these folks investing in crypto, it didn't move the market. And that's because we are in a bear market. And I think the market is the folks that are in the market are kind of over speculation, meaning the hype behind it. Right. That's not to say speculation is completely out. But there's not the same reaction that we may have saw in 2017 and, and years before, right? Uh, but I think what people are waiting for is actual utility and for these actual launches to take place. For example, BACT, which is waiting on CFTC approval, is you know being delayed. So we know it's there, but I think once it's live, once certain things are live and, and the utility kicks in, I think that's when we'll see that bullish sentiment um, start to appear. But right now, it's a bear market. It's it's rough out here, but uh, we are the early adopters, the, early, the pioneers here, and we have to be patient. Now, of course, before I jump into news, this is not financial or investment advice. Uh, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscription button, thumbs up, um, and let's get into it. First, uh, we have news here. SBI Holdings CEO Yoshitaka Katao. Uh, I've talked about him before. As you know, SBI Holdings and um, also known as SBI Group, they have a partnership with Ripple. And uh, they are part of the 60 Bank Consortium in Japan. Uh, they had launched, if you guys recall, the Money Tap app with Santander Bank and so forth. Uh, also, they have SBI Ripple Asia. So they own part of Ripple, actually. And I think it's around 10%. So this guy is heavily invested in seeing XRP do well. And he had his own predictions. SBI also launched their own exchange called SBI Virtual Currencies. It's not fully live yet. There was, um, you know, open to certain users um, and they essentially have XRP as a base currency on SBI Virtual Currencies. Well, in a recent uh, uh, magazine called it's called Boss Magazine, um, and essentially he talks about uh, the adoption of XRP, saying 20 of the world's major banks will incorporate XRP for international uh, money transactions in 2019. So we've heard this from Brad Garlinghouse also saying dozens of banks will be using XRP to, uh, this year. And I think we're starting to see that, right? Even Ripple just recently announced six new X Rapid partners, uh, one of them being Euro Exim Bank. Um, but well, I think what a big part of the holdup was the regulatory clarity in the United States, because we're not seeing any major bank in the United States saying, hey, we're going to go you lose X, or X rapid. I think the regulatory uncertainty is holding them back from doing so. Now, that's not to say the other banks in the other countries, which don't have that, this type of regulatory uncertainty, um, can't go ahead and launch. And I think we're starting to see that. So banks around the world have started exploring and making plans for using X rapid and integrating XRP for international money transfers. But according to SBI CEO Yoshitaka Katao, 2019 will be seeing 20 of the major bank banks of the world start incorporating XRP. The XRP enthusiast, um, Dylan, this this person on YouTube, uh, excuse me, YouTube, uh, on Twitter, uh, shared these screenshots here um, of the Boss February 2019 issue with the interview with Katow talking about Ripple, uh, XRP, and a lot more. So once again, here are the screenshots. So shout out to Dylan. Um, and here, you know, it's some of the content translated. Here's Mr. Yoshitaka uh, Katao. Um, so this article summarizes it. Uh, according to the translated version, Katao starts about starts about ma making a payment through Bitcoin being difficult, which XRP will make possible. His goal is to set up XRP for the use of the people for which it must be used for transferring money by the banks. Here's a quote. I think 2019 is a year 
when approximately 20 of the world's major banks would start to incorporate XRP for international money tra uh, transactions. Here's another um, uh, quote. Once we develop and are able to use XRP on Corda and R3 blockchain technology, which SBI has been investing in, the financial transaction of trading can be done in a very short time. So if you recall, R3 in December mentioned that they will be going live with XRP as the first asset on its on its Corda settler. So you have Ripple's X Rapid and you have R3's Corda settler. So uh, the, the infrastructure being built out for the usage of uh, XRP and R3 has their own bank and financial institution clients. So. Here's another quote by using XRP visitor from uh, visitors from all over the world who come to Japan can pay bills without exchanging money from the US dollar to Japanese yen. That's big. Um, so obviously, like I said, this guy's bullish on XRP. It's, he has a vested interest, so it's not um, that he doesn't have skin in the game. Like I said, they, uh, they own 10% of Ripple. You know, they're setting up all this infrastructure. They have a, a relationship with R3. So Big things are ahead, and this is why I'm personally so bullish on, on XRP. I hold XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and many others, but I am most bullish on XRP because of the use case, because of the utility. And, you know, essentially, it's not my feelings, it's the facts. That's what I'm looking at. Now, if we were to swap out XRP with Bitcoin, if Bitcoin had this scalability, speed, and low cost per transaction, and it was being used for this type of... Um, uh, use case, I'll be all in on Bitcoin because I am not, it's not about my feelings or, or some crypto religious trying thing or trying to take down banks and governments. I'm here to make money. I believe this is the next tech boom. I believe this technology is going to be part of our lives. It's going to, you know, there's going to be an evolution of currency. Blockchain itself is just going to uh, uh, be the next internet and, and, and just uh, change the world the same way the internet did. So, Big news here, and this is not from some uh, random Joe Schmo. This is the CEO of a major bank in Japan, part of a uh, major bank consortium as well, guys. Now, we're kind of going to talk a bit about a lot of international news here. And the reason why I like to share this with you guys, because what's happening around the globe can impact the price of crypto, as we just highlighted with XRP in Japan. Uh, crypto is global, and, it's, and that opens up a lot of opportunities because let's say one country is maybe still lagging behind like the US, it, crypto can still uh, see a bull run from other, you know, a spark by other countries like your South Korea's, your Japan's and so forth. Well, Belarus largest bank considers setting up crypto exchange, says uh, chairman of the board. Guys, we are seeing stock exchanges, banks, all these Wall Street traditional companies all looking to set up their services. It's amazing what's happening. Just even in in the U.S., Fidelity Digital Assets, uh, TD, uh, excuse me, TD Ameritrade backing Eris X. It's just all these major players are now getting in. It's these traditional companies. It's amazing what's happening. Belarus Bank, the largest bank in Belarus, is considering setting up a crypto exchange. Local information agency Belta reports, according to the bank's chairman of the board, Viktor An Anakik, or something like that. Uh, efforts are now being made to explore explore the possibility of setting up a crypto exchange. That's, this is major. Uh, this person claimed the digitization is one of the most important focuses of the Belarus bank in 2019, noting that the bank is also working with mobile carriers aiming to expand its services. Specifically, Belarus bank is planning to issue virtual cards online rather than physical credit cards in a few months. Uh, the chairman emphasized that the banking sector should keep up with the digital industry as the space is evolving very fast. Like I just said, this is the natural evolution of currency and technology is the next tech boom and no one wants to get left behind and there's money to be made here just as there was in the dot-com boom in the 90s, right? It didn't happen overnight. Companies like Google and Amazon and so forth didn't become you know, billion dollar companies, trillion dollar companies overnight, it took time. But those who were early adopters and investors made money. I mean, even people, I remember folks who were working at Google, you know, they were like chefs and so forth. They got stock. When Google went public, many of them became millionaires, guys. So that's where patience is important because we're seeing, um, you know, that for this new asset class, the infrastructure being built out. 
Uh, on January 15, reportedly the first crypto trading platform that allows users to purchase tokenized traditional assets such as gold with cryptocurrencies was launched in Belarus. Um, the, the project is backed by two firms, Larna Bell Ventures and VP Capital. By January 16, the platform reportedly issued 150 various types of tokens, while the company expects to eventually list 10,000 uh, assets. So uh, big, big things happening globally. And this is all great news if you're holding crypto, guys. If you're still here, count yourself lucky. Now, I had reported on this, I think, a couple of weeks ago, where there was talks about MIT looking to build an, or create the new Bitcoin. So it's interesting. You have the smartest minds. You have a lot of resources. And um, it looks like we have an update here. MIT's new cryptocurrency reduces data requirements considerably. considerably I can't say that word today. Researchers say. MIT researchers have been working on a new cryptocurrency to reduce by up to 99% the amount of data users need to store in order to make transactions versus popular cryptocurrencies. Next month, Derek Lung, uh, Yossi Gilad, and Nikolai Zelvdovich will present their paper on Vault. So I guess that's the name of the new crypto they created. A cryptocurrency said to be the much more scalable when compared to other already existing tokens. Uh, Here's a quote. Currently, there are a lot of cryptocurrencies, but they're hitting bottlenecks related to joining the system as a new user and to storage. The broad goal here is to enable cryptocurrencies to scale well for more and more users. So just as we saw in the dot com boom, guys, people are going to there's going to be generation one, two and three and so forth of new technology. And the fact is, one of the reasons why I'm so bullish on XRP is because it's a superior technology. It's faster can handle more transactions and cheaper to use than Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, and, and many others out there. So these are the facts. And I know people have their religious feelings and all kinds of stuff towards Bitcoin and so forth. And I believe Bitcoin will be around. I believe it's going to be a store of value like digital gold. I Its utility sucks right now. Um, but look, man, you, you, this is why I'm open to hearing what these guys are building, because it could be... Uh, way better than Bitcoin, for example. Now, uh, it could even be better than XRP. I'm just saying it, right? Now, XRP, vastly superior to what's in the market. Once again, this is facts. It's not my feelings. Um, so let's see what, how much transactions this uh, vault can handle. What's the cost, right? And how scalable is it? Um, and, you know, how, how fast is it, essentially? So, this is interesting, guys. You got some smart people here, and, and I think um, we're going to start to seeing, I guess this would be generation three cryptos or digital assets. So um, the innovation is happening, and it's it's going to be, because just remember, you had AOL and, and Yahoo for a while in the market, right? Yahoo being a browser, and then who came along and just brought a better technology? Google. Right. Yahoo became irrelevant. Yahoo was big in the 90s, but they became irrelevant because they didn't innovate. They they didn't have, uh, you know, the, the right approach to it. And Google did. And, and there's many other examples like that. Right. Even if you look at browsers like Netscape. Right. Netscape was I remember using Netscape in the early 90s. And then, uh, you know, like your Firefoxes and Google Chrome came along and it's like, well, I'm not going to use that. Right. Or in Internet Explorer and so forth. So people will go to the, you know, crypto that is uh, better suited for their needs and to use because this is about utility. We can only speculate for so long. We have to have utility. So this is very interesting, guys, and I'm going to keep my eyes and ears open about this. You should as well because you got some smart people. And I believe, if I recall, they actually got funding from Pantera Capital. So they have money being pushed into this project. So we'll have to wait and see. Now, Portal allows you to buy altcoins using fiat without converting to Bitcoin or Ethereum first. So this is a new uh, exchange, I guess, called Netcoins, if I'm not mistaken here. Um, here's the article. I think you've heard about them before, but uh, it's weird that they have the title like that. It's like, yeah, I mean, exchanges can add fiat pairing anytime, but a new fee... A new crypto purchasing portal is enabling users to purchase more than 20 cryptocurrencies and altcoins using fiat directly. Netcoins, the Canadian company behind the app, says the recently launched service is operational 24-7 online, helping to deliver real-time transactions without delays. 
The Netcoins team says it's offering stands uh, out from competitors uh, because it simplifies transactions for crypto enthusiasts and eliminates the need for change need to change fiat currencies to Bitcoin or Ethereum before going to purchase altcoins. I mean, I, I don't know why this is being positioned as though it's something they're doing as that other exchanges aren't doing. There are a lot of exchanges since you know 2017 and 2018 that have added fiat pairing, um, and we're seeing it across the board. Um, so, you know, sure, there are some exchanges out there you still have to use Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so forth, but a majority are looking to get fiat pairing, and, and many have added that. So, uh, but it's still good. You know, I guess maybe in Canada, this is, you know, uh, offering maybe a little better service, but uh, the new Netcoins platform also offers an automated Know Your Customer KYC product, giving users the opportunity to complete the registration quickly for approved trading, which is great. That's great. According to the company, applications can be verified in less than 24 uh, hours. That's really great. So uh, it looks like this is a um, looks like this is going to be one of those platforms that may be easy to to buy and sell your crypto and here's what the site looks like um they have otc trading interesting interesting so it looks like they're trying to do some big stuff um and they have xrp they have bitcoin they have ethereum they, have, they pretty much have the top the top coins so uh continued expansion uh building out of services and adding new features everyone gearing up for the next bull run now like I said, uh, we have a lot of global news, but it's important to understand what's happening here because, like I said, other markets can can help uh, push more volume, spark bull runs, and so forth. Eurasian Economic Commission prepares a report on cryptocurrencies, considers regulations. So, um, Eurasia, the Eurasian Economic Commission, which serves an, as an executive body for the Eurasian Economic Union, has prepared a report on cryptocurrencies to promote regulation in the area. This is great news. Russian news agency TASS reports. The commission's minister uh, for integration and macroeconomics, Tatyana Valovaya, said the EAEU, a political and economic union established by Russia, Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, and uh, Kyrgyzstan in 2014 aims to create a consolidated financial market by 2025 as the crypto and blockchain industry industries bec are becoming more robust the EAAU has to study them she continued so guys if crypto was so irrelevant if, if according to some people you know crypto is going to zero it's dead it's useless um, this and that and all that you know the FUD um, but the world governments are recognizing what's happening and they are now it has their attention and a big it has the attention of the big money like we just talked about corporations wall street and all and so forth these two moving behemoths are setting up the this this the laying the foundation guys and i hope you see it i hope you see this these are the facts that's why i try to bring you the facts here not my um just speaking about random stuff and not showing you the the actual facts here because that's important guys there's a lot of people that say stuff and they don't show you what what are the facts or the sources right um but this is uh important guys this is all great news so the eurasian uh region i mean if they go ahead and regulate that includes russia i mean that is a big win and i can't wait for china to finally you know, go go pro crypto because um, we know there's a big market there and um, big things are ahead. Big things are ahead. This is exciting stuff. And uh, we like I said, we do have to be patient. So those of you who are maybe young in the market, you know, just maybe new to the market, I should say, um, I hope you see what's being built here and you understand uh, you're not just focused on price because there's people who it's a balance, right? Price is important. You Price is the value of your crypto, your your investment, and you don't. Nobody wants to lose their money. I don't want to lose my money. I want to make money. I want to make significant returns so I can retire early, so I can pay off my debt, so I can go on more vacations, things like that. So I hope you guys understand my perspective, and I hope you understand the business perspective of this and the market cycles and these things. It's there's a lot of things here because a lot of these principles they don't teach you in school or. They don't, uh, you know, if you wanted to dabble in investment, there's a lot of uh, hurdles, 
But I think crypto is now opening up um, the educational aspect. And I, I'm speaking about myself, too. I learned a lot since I got into this market late 2016. There's things about market cycles and the stock market and things I didn't understand, right? Because you kind of just listen to the news and you're not really in it doing, you know, looking in the weeds of, oh, this is how this works. And here's why this is happening. You're kind of given a narrative, right? Um, but once your eyes are open to what's going on, I mean, you start thinking like the big money of when, uh, where the opportunities are, understanding markets move in cycles, things go down, things go back up. It happens in the stock market, it happens in real estate, it happens in the precious metals. These are just natural cycles. And sure, they can sometimes take long, but... Um, that's where patience is the key. That's where guys like Warren Buffett and all these major investors have made money being patient, right? Not not scrambling, not, oh my God, the price is down. I need to dump it, right? And if you think about that logically, it's like you only lose money if you sell. If you have an asset, if you have a house, right? You bought a house at a certain period and maybe you're looking to flip it to make money. You have to wait for the market to be at a certain rate for you to actually make money, right? Um so you got to start thinking that way, like understanding how assets and value and market cycles and all these things work. So hope some of you who are new to the market, I think, um, you know, I'm hoping I'm coming across well to you that you understand I'm conveying what, you know, these these market principles, because um, like I said, they don't teach you this stuff in school. Uh, you kind of kind of have to learn it on your own unless you're part of a, the financial market. Right. You're on Wall Street. Then you definitely know this. Uh, so BitTorrent tokens sold out in under 15 minutes, netting over $7 million. So uh, you guys know the uh, BitTorrent in partnership with Tron, launching the BTT token via Binance. Looks like they sold out in 15 minutes. Uh, and, and like I said, they made uh, $7.1 million. So, uh, you know, I personally did not invest in this, to be transparent. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. It's interesting. Um I don't know, maybe I might, you know, I'll, I'll see how things progress. Obviously, one of the things why I didn't want to uh, invest in it is just BitTorrent. There's the certain types of content there that is being moved on there where it could put them under certain types of scrutiny, especially as you have a utility token that people are investing in, uh, because I'm sure there's illegal pirated content that's uh, on there that's being you know, shared. And I think that's why Tron itself did not use the Tron tokens on here because that would have been perfect for them. But I understand why they didn't do it. There's a big risk. And once again, I like to approach this factually and logically. I know some people might be like, dude, were you crazy? You should have got it or whatever, right? But I, I do like to think about what I'm investing in. And that's why people like, I see the comments, you should review this project. And I take some time to review it. I, I want to see how things play out. For example, I, I saw like spam comments about, uh, and just influx of comment before the recent Apollo pump and dump. And I looked at it and I was like, wow, look at that, right? I saw the comments coming in. I was like, why are these people, there's like a lot. It's not like a natural comment, right? Where you say, oh, you know, review Apollo or, you know, what do you think about it was more it looked like fabricated uh uh comments and then i saw like a couple days later pump and dump on apollo's part so that's why you gotta be careful and i'm looking into hollow chain i'm looking into many others but um i want to do my due diligence guys i don't want to just put out content there for you guys to say oh yeah tony told me i should invest in or do this and obviously this is not investment advice but I want to make sure when I bring some content to the table, I understand what's going on with the projects, who they're partnered with, what is the adoption, what's the potential, what problem are they solving, right? Those things are important. So guys, what do you think about the news? Um, obviously, some big XRP uh, speculation news here, although we, we've we heard it from the horse's mouth. These these are CEOs, uh, Brad Garlinghouse, Yoshitaki Katao. So these are not like random Joe Schmo, random dudes on uh, in the crypto market. These are uh, CEOs of actual companies. So, um, and in Belarus, bank making some big moves. MIT. I, I'm very curious about this crypto, guys. I'm very, very curious about this crypto. So, anyway, what do you guys think about the news? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Please help share my channel and videos with your friends and family, and on social media so we can spread the facts have help people understand what's going on in the market and uh, thank you guys for your support and i'll talk to you all later.